Havoc Team Hunter has a ton of dead talents right now, based in part due to their tuning or in their point value versus other talent points. With the switch for the dev team to focus more on tuning of talents, I wanted to talk about those and bring to light what could change and what should change for Havoc Demon Hunter. Before we begin, a lot of my viewers aren't subscribed, so if you see my content in your channel feed, if you enjoy my content, if you're just coming on this for the first time, drop a sub, it really helps me out. We are growing in numbers and hoping to be a big enough community by the time Dragonfight launches. Um, you know, I just want to thank out for the support. So if you like Havoc, Demon Hunter content, like WoW uh, content in general, like DPS content, leave a sub. Tons of that's going to be coming out, and uh, enjoy the video. So we're back on beta. Now, I'm recording this on Tuesday, the 27th of September. So this is before any new beta builds come out. So if there's a beta build that fixes a, fixes a ton of tuning changes and fixes a bunch of talent, ch talent choices that I'm going to talk about today, whoops. Um, you know, hey, just that's just showbiz, baby. That, that's just what happens. But today, with the different focus from the Blizzard dev team more towards a tuning environment where, you know, they're trying to get talents tuning relative to each other or things tuning relative to each other so that, you know, having picking one thing has a more equal weight to another thing, I figured it'd be a good time to go through and kind of talk about different talent choices. Um, specifically choice nodes, but especially in other different choices that just realistically won't be picked right now because of what they're being weighed against. Um, this is a big thing with choice nodes, right? A lot of choice nodes are just going to be 90 to 10% pick rate. But there's some where it's going to be 100 to 0%. And I think realistically, it's important to kind of talk about these and bring awareness to some of the issues that are still left in the talent tree while as we move into this more uh, tuning environment. Now, um, I do know that a bunch of bugs are being fixed this week um, for raid testing. So First Blood will do Chaos Damage on both, but Death uh, Sweep and Blade Dance now. Um, know your enemy is sort of fixed, so before it was implying half, uh, sorry, twice the value it should have, it's being reduced in half. Uh, any means necessary was also doing this, uh, and they're reducing it in half. However, this isn't a real fix. Um, it's close, but a few things will still be double dipping, a few things weren't affected by it previously. So that's not a real fix. And the demonic is back down to six seconds, that should all be coming in this build. So that is Pog, you know, we can actually do some realistic testing now, without all of these bugs kind of skewing numbers, skewing everything like that. But uh, without the way, let's get into some talents that just aren't picked. So, I think a lot of this utility stuff right here is fine. There are definitely scenarios where you want Disrupting Fury. Definitely scenarios where you want Katsu Magic. Um, definitely scenarios where you want Shard War Blades. And all this stuff up here also has, you know, scenarios where it could be useful. Where you could end up picking those things. Or where Vengeance want those, etc. However, two nodes that are just really bad and are getting out Will of the Eldari. Are these two Concentrated Sigils and Precise Sigils. Which are actively just worse for your gameplay. Concentrated Sigils makes them all place your location. Yes, it increases their effects, but it means you can't choose where your Sigils are going, which is just bad. Uh, precise Sigils just places them in your target's location. Again, bad. You can't use it to silence mobs out of area. You can't use it to pull if you're Vengeance. Um, so that's just not good. And the other one, Lost in Darkness, it does literally nothing if you're in PvE, unless in very, very niche scenarios, like um, Lords of Dread was the niche scenario for Lost in Darkness that actually ended up having it be good. But again, these two talent nodes are just worthless, um, and they block out the 4% max health. So I think that is something that should be looked at still. You just never want to take these in any scenario where you can. Um, another one that realistically I don't think will, is really that big of a, a decision is Demonic Origins. So Demonic Origins is cool. Um, you know, the fact that you have a 2 minute meta and it gives you 10% verse is interesting. But 2 against Demonic, where they're both supposed to just give you more Demonic uptime, um, they're just not, it's not competing, right? Having 6 seconds every 40 to 25 seconds, depending on if you take Cycle of Hatred or not, is not uh, worse than 10% versatility every 2 minutes. The thing with Demonic Origins um, is that it really is trying to do the same thing. So this is one of those nodes where they're just going to always be one option or the other. Now, if Demonic Origins was tuned up a little bit so that uh, while you're in meta, you have a little bit of a stronger benefit than just 10% versatility, I think realistically you could see some use of this talent, especially in single target with stuff like Shattered Destiny, um, you know, Cycle of Hatred, Stuff like that to really get um, a, uh, an extension on your metamorphosis. Um, but as it stands right now, Demonic will just be better because 10% um, versatility on a 2 minute meta is just not good. Uh, not as good compared to the Demonic talent. Another one in the class tree that um, you know just won't be picked is Fey and Powered Elixir. Cooldown of the Hunt is reduced by 12 seconds when an enemy is killed while affected by its damage over time effect. So the dot uh, that the Hunt leaves is a 6 second dot on 5 targets. And normally you want to use the hunt on pull so that the dot runs its full course. What this is doing here um, is basically making it so that if one of those targets dies or the dot is on it, you get 12 seconds off your cooldown. So if all five dies, you get um, five times 12 seconds off your cooldown and you get a pretty reasonable reduction in the cooldown of your um, the hunt. Um, coming up to about 60 seconds, so making it a 30 second cooldown. 
Um, but against Unnatural Malice, increasing the damage or time effect of the hunt by 30%, there is just no contest with Fey Empowered Elixir. There's realistically not really any scenarios where you want to use Fey Empowered Elixir over Unnatural Malice. Um, the only time Fey Empowered Elixir could be used is if you're trying to kind of snipe a bunch of dying adds with the hunt. But then you lose a lot of damage on the hunt. Sure, it makes it a 30 second cooldown if you manage to get um, 5 kills with it. But the, the fact that you have to do that is just unlikely. Especially since um, you're going to strike one of those targets for a large amount of nature damage or chaos damage if you're running any means necessary. Meaning that the dot itself uh, won't even tick that long on that target if you're hitting something that's dying. So I know Fey Empowered Elixir is based off of the um, Torghast power of its same name, which was much stronger. Of course they can't bring it in. But I think something here, maybe um, the, the Knife A Legendary... Could be more uh, enticing than um, Fey Empowered Elixir, and something, and this will just never be picked, really. Um, other stuff in the class tree is uh, realistically fine, you know. Um, there's scenarios where you pick a lot of the other stuff here. Aldrachi Design is there just for Avengers, so we're not going to get into that. But realistically, everything else is fine. Um, there's scenarios where you pick a lot of the other stuff. Um, a lot of the points are fairly evenly balanced against each other. So I have no more uh, complaints about uh, the class tree here. Onto the spec tree, I do want to say, uh, I don't think Insatiable Hunger will be picked that often. A lot of people are going to be picked Demon Blades. However, I don't think that Insatiable Hunger really needs to be tuned that much higher. Um, the fact that Demon's Bite increases 50% more damage and gives you 5-10% more Fury is fine if you don't want to go down the Demon's Blades routes. I think we have so much what we're doing in our rotation now that Demon's Blades is going to be better because it's a more passive Fury gain, right? Um, if you have to spend those GCDs to Demon's uh, Bite, and you are going to be losing GCDs to being able to push things like Chaos Strike, things like Annihilation, things like Death Sweep, stuff like that. So I think that Demon Blades is just going to be better, but I don't think this is going is numerically that bad of a choice. Um, I think people are just going to pick Demon Blades um, as it is. Another one down here, again, big complaint I always talk about, Fellow Eruption and this choice node here. Just really hard to take because of how tight we are on points. Um, if these are moved up into the top row, I think it'd be better. I don't think that's going to change now. I think it's just going to be the way it is. You're going to have to drop something down here to take them, which is whatever. It's fine. C'est la vie. So, uh, moving on to our other choice nodes down here. Now, here we have bigger issues. So, I talked about Fel Barrage already. In fact, I had a whole video on it. If you want to check that video, um, I'll put a little pin up above. Fel Barrage is just fly out worse than Glaive Tempest. Glaive Tempest is hasted. And yes, it deals reduced damage beyond 5 targets as opposed to 8. But realistically, in most pulls, you're not going to uh, really notice that. Glaive Tempest also just does 24,000 Chaos damage over 3 seconds every about 15 when you have your uh, meta haste. Um, versus Fel Barrage, which does 40,000 Chaos damage um, every 1 minute. So, you know, you can use this 4 times uh, for every 1 use of Fel Barrage. Meaning that, it's, you know, it, it says 24,000, 25,000, but realistically, it's like, it's like 75 to 100,000 uh, per minute versus Fel Barrage, which is just 40,000. So this will just never be picked. This really needs to be looked at, um, or else we'll never take any Fel Barrage. Over here, too, um, I think Lysian Decree has a lot of uses where it can be picked, especially with any means necessary. It's a big arcane hit that turns into chaos um, every minute or so. Giving a lot of sigils as well, which can give um, Fury if you're running Demonic Appetite. Far to the Flame, um, while it will be picked in PvP a lot, I'm pretty sure, due to uh, the fact that you can heal from the demon, you can uh, the demon can break you out of CC. Um, a lot of people don't actually like this talent. Um, I don't think this numerically is that bad of a choice node. I think um, either one has play where it's, where it's useful. But another issue with Far to the Flame is just the anti-synergy with a lot of Throw Glaive talents, specifically Soul Rend. So Soul Rend makes your Throw Glaive leave a dot on the target for all the damage you deal. However... Um, Fart of the Flame makes you want to target your demon with the Glaive. Uh, what this does is it reduces the overall value of Soul Rend on those targets because you're getting one less Glaive bounce. Um, likewise, I think Furious Throws is a little bit of a of a bait uh, where it is in the tree, especially. I used to be a big Furious Throws guy, big fan of it. But I think the fact that it makes it cost Fury um, is actually pretty bad because uh, Throw Glaive, especially in AoE or especially in other scenarios, um, is a pretty good filler when you don't have the Fury to uh, use some GCDs. So I think, uh, I think this is kind of a trap right now. I don't think that's going to really change too much in tuning. Maybe make it cost a little bit less Fury. Uh, will be better. And then uh, for Farther the Flame, I don't really have a suggestion. I think it's more based on how people like the talent than it is based on the actual numerical values or numerical uh, whatever the talent does. Um, I think maybe make it do a little bit more damage could make it a little bit more enticing. Because realistically, I don't think there's much use case uh, from Farther the Flame over Elysian Decree, except for in PvP. But I do see the issue of making this too strong in PvP. Um, you know, so we don't really want that. Another big issues uh, on the tree, Chaotic Transformation. We I've talked about this so many times. I've beaten this dead horse so many, so many times. It sucks. It feels bad to put a talent point in here. 
especially when it gates down looks can kill which is going to be really good in the early stages of this expansion when we have, don't have that much critical strike um this basically just doubles the damage of i beam which is already doing a lot of damage because of all the mastery we're going to be having and because uh they buffed it up um so really chaotic transformation just kind of sucks it feels bad to take it put it ba baseline with meta um just put looks can kill on its spot i'll be a happy camper everyone will be very excited please um lots of talents on here uh i want to talk about interview and russ's huntler we don't really know how these are supposed to work yet they say entering demon form uh causes and leaving demon form however they don't really work with um demonic meta right now again demonic meta is bugged so haven't been able to test it perfectly but a little bit of clarification on that we're pretty sure they're supposed to work demonic meta but right now they don't likewise entering inner, inner demon from like actually casting a metamorphosis gives you an 11 second buff uh which lets you just kind of repeatedly trigger it we don't know if that's intended it could be but again just some clarification on that would be very useful the last two nodes here which i don't think will be taken too often um Lens onslaught is just kind of a really boring um node here i think buffing up its uh percent chance value a little bit will make it more enticing likewise serrated glaive is a two point talent a little bad a little boring uh it does synergize decently well with furious throws however oftentimes whenever you furious throws the glaive is going to bounce to similar targets and you're going to lose out a little bit of that uh extra thing now there are some uses for this in pvp where other things don't have you can combo it with stuff like chaotic imprint um stuff with furious throws and get a lot of uh glaive damage and then hit them with a massive i beam because chaotic imprint will work with chaos uh supposedly with enemies necessary really just increasing that value um, but outside of that, I think realistically, a lot of the choices in our tree are actually really good against each other, besides from what I talked about. Um, you know, there's scenarios where you take this left side, there's scenarios where you take Chaos Theory, where you take Isolated Prey, there's scenarios where you take all of this stuff here, and the middle tree as well. There's scenarios where you want that, scenarios where you want this, you can go into Demonic Appetite if you want, Improved Fell Rush is decent, the stuff on the right side here is decent. Overall, besides those things I talked about, our tree is actually in a really good spot. I'm curious to see where Tooting ends up on some things. Um, I'm curious to see how the momentum thing happens. A lot of people don't like momentum and the whole debate around it. I'm curious to see where that ends up. I'm curious about Know Your Enemy because this is really powerful. Of course it was bugged, but this will be fixed. Um, we'll see how they end up on Essence Break. I'll keep you guys updated on any tuning changes that do happen. Uh, of course, any big changes to Havoc Team Hunter, I will always have a video as fast as I can about them. Havoc Team Hunter is my main. It's my primary love. It's one of my favorite specs in the game. I will be covering other stuff besides Havoc Team Hunter, but this is my main focus always. So um, let me know what you think about um, kind of the issues left in the Havoc Demon Tree. Let me know if you uh, if you have some different opinions than what I do. Oh, wait, I actually forgot one. So we're going to jump back to Aura Pain. I think that this has uses where um, it could be used. 6% uh, isn't that big of a crit strike chance, especially with how much we have from like initiative and stuff like that. Um, likewise, losing out in Fellblade does feel a little bad on your Fury generation, but it's not terrible. Um, I think Fellblade is just really good with momentum. Um, so I don't think this one's that bad. We'll see how that ends up, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see on that. Anyway, so, uh, back when I was saying, you know, uh, I really appreciate all the support. We're so close to a thousand subscribers. We are like less than 50 away, which is crazy to me. I never thought I'd reach this point and I just want to thank everybody. Uh, anyways, let me know down below if you agree or disagree with what I've been talking about, um, on some of the issues left for the tree. Let me know if the stuff I missed, let me know, um, you know, what you want Blizzard to do about it, uh, and all that. So if you like the video, consider subscribing, leave a like, leave a comment, and, uh, I'll see you guys next time.